Good afternoon, everybody. It's Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, in case you might have missed it, we actually did do coverage this morning for Hurricane Barilla. She made landfall over the Yucatan. Barilla is now a tropical storm with 65 mile per hour winds, but is expected to head back out into open waters. And we will talk about that a little bit later as far as the impacts are concerned. We do want to talk about the severe weather threat that's expected this weekend. It's nothing incredibly palpable here, but I'm trying to make sure that I'm covering as much as I can to it's kind of hard considering we have a considerable hurricane that is still expected to make landfall now in Southern Texas. But in any case though, let's go ahead and look at tomorrow's threat. As far as today's threats concerned, we're just about done here. We've uh, used up a lot of the energy in the atmosphere at this point with the daytime heating, the storm threat's going to diminish from this point here. Had up to about 40 wind reports and one hail report today. I'm not expecting a whole lot. Maybe a little bit further out west, we could get a little bit more in the way of damaging winds or hail this evening. But beyond that point, I'm not expecting much. Looking towards tomorrow, more organized threat of severe weather here. Tornado threat's going to stay pretty low. Not uncommon during the summertime, but not impossible to get a tornado either. So even though we had a have a, a less than two percent area for tomorrow we had one for today as well but we still got tornado warnings in uh, central michigan so let that be a reminder that if you're under a thunderstorm risk you need to pay attention but in any case though main threat for tomorrow is the wind and most definitely the hail threat where there's a hatch risk right now a lot of these storms are going to be very elevated at this point so the storm bases themselves will be elevated. Usually with the tornado threat, you want those storm bases to be a little bit more towards the surface. A lot of that's going to have to do with the temperature to dew point spread or the dew point depression, as it's also called, possibly. Same thing can be expected for Sunday setup. And then also we have to watch, of course, towards South Texas, because with any sort of land falling systems, regardless of whether you're near the eye or not, there is always the threat of tropical tornadoes on that right front quadrant which we can see over here, just to the north of Corpus Christi, of course, Corpus Christi itself, and also even Brownsville. So looking at the models here, looking at the upper levels of the atmosphere first, we have our features that are gonna be causing our severe weather. This is the feature today that caused our severe weather. This little trough right here. Very weak area, low pressure though, so I think that helped keep things a little bit limited. And of course, like I said before, once we lose our daytime heating, that's going to be that. And we're going to anticipate that happening over the course of the next couple hours. Here's our next feature right here. It's going to help cause our severe weather. Large part of this is going to be due to a ridge also that's going to be popping up over here towards the west. It's also going to increase the temperatures over here, unfortunately. So apologies to anyone that was looking for a cool down here. As we continue to go forward here, you see the short wave begin to pop up here, even at this level of the atmosphere. This is a favorable setup for hail and damaging winds, of course. If uh, the surface was a little bit better in regards to the winds and also some forcing, I do think there could have been a tornado threat with this. But as it stands right now, I'm not really looking at anything too impressive there. And like I said, same thing exists for the following day on Sunday. Pretty much expecting a uh, little weak trough that pops up here. And this could induce a little bit of shower and storm activity. Some of these could be severe. I do think this is partially more of a conditional setup, but we could see some large hail, maybe some strong winds out of this tornado. I would say, I would say li not likely, but you never know. And of course with barrel, that's where things kind of get a little bit more interesting, but that's going to be more of an overnight Sunday type of deal. So we'll get into that later. But in any case, though, let's go ahead and look towards the mid levels of the atmosphere. And this is really just about as impressive as the storm system gets. Even then, it's not super noteworthy at this point. Like I said, short waves pop up a little bit after lunchtime. We'll kind of ramp up into the early to mid afternoon. By the time we get towards late afternoon, I think that's where we'll see peak storm activity. We do see an increase in that mid level shear here, but I do think by that point, most of the storm activity is going to move out of our severe area of interest. So really, it's also a matter of timing here. Like I said, if everything, a lot of times with severe weather, everything just has to come 
come together at the right moment and we just aren't really seeing that as we go towards sunday pretty much a similar deal you see the short wave pop up early in the afternoon here let's get later in the afternoon things kind of fall off mid-level shear is not even that impressive and it's a pretty good indicator of what the low level shear is going to look like again as we look towards barrel and we'll get a closer look at this a little bit later that's where things start to ramp up a bit so a lot to cover there but looking at the low level shear today not much to really be had there there was a little sneaky area that's popped up over here towards central michigan where we might add a little shot directional shear is not really there though so we go towards the following day notice by the time we get to the early afternoon look how little low level shear there is i think this is a big reason as to why we aren't really going to expect much of the way in the way of a tornado threat here so we go towards the following hours after that like i said timing this would be towards about seven o'clock central time this is when the low level jet tries to pick up here and if there was going to be any chance at all it would be then but i do think timing is going to work against that and we're probably not going to see much of anything i do think the same thing will exist with tomorrow's setup or sunday setup i should say like i said not much in the way of low level jet available again and that's essential when it comes to tornadic development there are some parameters that you can have that will help overcome that but so far i haven't seen them and we'll get into that in just a moment here then of course here's barrel right here and this is where the tornado threat kind of comes into play with that setup we'll be streaming that of course sunday night into early monday morning so look forward to that so as far as other parameters are concerned some parameters that can occasionally help to overcome this would be if the dew point and the temperature were close together here as you can see though this is looking towards tomorrow if we get sufficient moisture the only problem is and we're gonna lock in an hour real quick here shift over to temperature if we go back a couple frames look what we have here just against that boundary where the storms fire where you see that little blotch 83 degree temperatures we put that up against 60 degree dew points it's going to keep those storm bases pretty high and when you're looking for tornadoes which are more surface based doesn't really bode as well for it also having a uh, shear of four is not going to help either so not too concerned about a tornado threat there we're going to go back a couple frames here so that way we can get back to the loop and what we'll be paying attention to from that point is going to be more so off towards the south here now we get actually pretty impressive moisture here over towards oklahoma city in the afternoon here but again we're going to go ahead and lock in another hour just like we did last time go over to temperature and what we'll see here against that boundary where the storms would be would be anticipated 88 degree dew points 70 degree temperatures it's a little bit better and you can actually see that the uh cloud bases are lower based off of these two parameters right here lfc and lcl but again shear four not helpful for tornado not really uh, conducive for tornadoes so go back and like I said before, you're not really going to see much better in the way of parameters from that point, really. We start to lose some of that moisture as we get later into the evening. Temperatures do drop, but like I said, again, that wind shear just isn't really there at the low levels. And that's going to keep things limited. As far as our low pressure sources here, this is another component that I would look at just to ensure that there is no chance of tornadoes going over the course of this weekend and if the low pressure was in closer proximity to our area of interest i would be more concerned with it this is just more or less to prove a point you can see it low pressure is all the way back towards colorado and there's really not much of anything that's going to help kind of trigger anything off to the surface here 
So again, elevated storms expected over the course of the weekend here. So would not fret too much when it comes to the threat of tornadoes. Like I said, it's pretty common during the summertime for this to occur to get damaging winds and hail. This is usually towards the uh, spring and the fall where we have those slightly better chances for tornadoes. Every once in a while, you might have a system that kind of breaks the rig. And again, here's the same thing as we head towards Sunday night here. Of course, here is our dominant low here in barrel. So let's go ahead and shift our attention over to some severe weather parameters real quick. And this is just to make sure that we are covering all our bases here. This is looking at our instability over the course of the next few days. Notice the amount of energy that's just available in general across the southeast in regards to thunderstorm coverage. Not anything I would expect in the regards to severe weather here because again, low level jet isn't in play here. Not much in the way of lifting mechanism. Just your classic summertime severe, uh, not even severe setup, just thunderstorm setup in general. But over towards our area of interest, another limiting factor actually is found with this. Not much in the way of cape available. We click on this area for tomorrow. This actually is the closest thing that I've seen to a decent tornado setup. And even then, I'm a little bit skeptical of this. You look towards the, actually this is kind, yeah, this is actually kind of decent here. But even so, there's some parameters here that I'm not necessarily, uh, I'm not necessarily, it's not making me latch onto this, particularly with the bases here. The LFC is still a little bit high. Not to say that we can't get a tornado out of this, but it's not all that strong. But this is the best that I've seen out of low level jet anywhere with this. If this can uptrend, we might have something. Would this be enough to warn a 2% tornado area? Maybe it depends on how far out to the east this goes, but this is a very, very small pocket. So I don't know if Storm Prediction Center latches onto this well enough. This is only on one model here. Let me actually take a look at something really quickly. Let's go ahead and look at HRRR, and we're going the other way with that. So a lot of model discrepancy with this. Actually, go ahead and be a little bit nerdy take a couple extra looks if we make our comparison here gfs going with severe so there you go there is our model discrepancy also being another limiting factor because whereas a couple of models might latch on to an iota of a chance for tornado threat others are not really going along with it and as we go towards the setup for sunday plenty of instability no surprise here. Oklahoma and Texas during this time of year, a lot of instability available. Go ahead and click askew T with that. And there you go, severe. Not much in the way of shear available. Again, also that temperature dew point depression here, definitely going to be a limiting factor for sure. But I do think damaging winds will be favorable, especially as we get towards the early part of the afternoon for the region. We do continue to have pretty impressive instability as we get later into it into the evening this is the closest that we're going to get to a tornado sounding here even then nice little spread right here and then of course like i said before towards the surface just things are not quite as ideal here like i said if we had richer dew points or the temperature dropped just a little bit here we could be talking a different story but we are going to have impressive amounts of downdraft cape and also pretty solid lapse rates here. So damaging winds and hail, once again, I do think are gonna be the main threat reigning supreme. So from that point, let's go ahead and talk about Hurricane Barrel here. All right, so switching gears on to Barrel now. Barrel is now a tropical storm at 65 mile an hour winds here. However, she is scheduled to reattain her hurricane status by Sunday here. I do think this is a typo error here on the date because this storm will be well inland by the time we get towards Monday here. But we are expecting this to reemerge over the Gulf. It just about has at this point. We'll go ahead and take a look at the satellite here. You can see that uh, 
going over the Yucatan has definitely impacted the storm. Definitely a shell of what it once was, but water's over here towards the Gulf, very warm right now. So reintensification is almost guaranteed at this point. There are a couple of factors that will inhibit this from rapidly intensifying because had we not had these parameters, I do think that we could maybe even see it. We could have maybe even seen this make it all the way back to a major hurricane here, which is great news considering that. But this is the current track of barrel now. And notice how over the last few days we've been seeing that turn off to the north just a little bit more. A slight little jog off to the north northeast occasionally. But for the most part, we've been going in a steady west northwest track here. Storm speed is still moving pretty well. It's at 15 miles an hour. We can still, like I said, we're still anticipating a hurricane at landfall here. We now have hurricane watches in effect for a large part of the Texas coast here. Particular some areas that have interested me, Brownsville, of course, Corpus Christi, and even up towards Galveston now, we actually have hurricane watches in effect here. We're going to see an increase in the watches issued and maybe some warnings within due time as well. So as we continue to go forward here, let's take a look at what our intensity forecast is right now. Then we'll get a quick little peek at the spaghetti models here. So again, this is where barrel is right now, just about out onto the water. This is from the five o'clock advisory. We'll be seeing this out on water most definitely by the eight o'clock one. And this will actually weaken all the way to 60 miles an hour. But as you can see here, once we get back out to the open waters, it does strengthen. By the time we get towards 2 a.m. Sunday, it does make it back up to a max tropical storm here. And by the time we get into the early morning hours on Sunday, into the afternoon, it will make it back to a category one hurricane. Excuse me. Got the hiccups here. But by the time we get close to landfall here, this does make it up to about 80 mile per hour winds. Actually could even potentially crack Cat 2 here. We know that uh, Barrel has been a rule breaker for this season by all intents and purposes here. First Category 5, or the strongest Category 5 to ever occur in the month of July. In fact, it was the earliest Category 5 too at that. But if we actually go ahead and look at the spaghetti models in regards to its intensity, we already know what its track is. Actually see a couple of models try to sneak this a little bit closer to maybe a mid-grade category one. We have one that pushes it up towards a two here. I do think this model's a little glitched out trying to go all the way up to three here. But I wouldn't rule out two. I think we have about probably 48, maybe 60 hours max before landfall is anticipated here so there is time for this to strengthen but getting into the inhibiting factors here i think a big problem that we may have with this will be the wind shear i think the wind shear over towards this region is going to come into play and slow this thing down a little bit in regards to its strength but it's also going to help uh, encourage that northward track that we're seeing here so while not all models are picking up on this, and this model's a little bit out of date, we're waiting for a new model to come in. I do think that this will play a factor into how things pan out with this look here. So if we go ahead and also take a look at some of that dry air to go along with it. We're looking at our mid-level humidities. Notice towards the south side of the storm, we have a little bit of dry air sneaking in too. I do think that this may help inhibit the storm briefly, but it will not fully stop it, of course. I do think that it will still intensify, especially with the warm waters we have here. We're near 90 degrees Fahrenheit with these waters right now. So, like I said, not much that I would, not much that I think would uh, truly slow this thing down fully, but it may help subdue it to the point to where it may not reach its max potential which we kind of have a general idea it already has that rapid intensification in its dna here other good news is even though it sucks that the yucatan got hit by this storm earlier today is the fact that we will end up seeing this being a little bit more limited too because it's going to take a time for it to reorganize if you look at it on the satellite it, it's not looking well you can clearly see it it's definitely 
looking a little bit discombobulated but still pretty well put together but it's going to take time for it to reorganize here so like i said this is another reason why i'm not expecting much in the way of rapid strengthening here so a couple quick things that we'll look at here before we head on out here for this video is we're going to look at this storm as it's approaching here and then we're going to try to get a general look at where the tornado threat will be right now we'll get into the other parameters like the flooding more so in a live stream discussion tomorrow but if we continue to go forward here here you go this is barrel right here i do think by early sunday afternoon late sunday morning we could start to see the tornado threat begin and i do think we may see an uptrend in that as we get later into the afternoon as barrel draws closer especially if we were to go ahead and look at that low level jet in particular towards the region here it's the mid and the low level jet with these systems that you always have to watch out for i do think in the early bands right here especially towards far southern texas is going to be the point of interest here of course this is only one model that i have available to look at at the time a lot of the other convective models are still not quite in range yet and there's still a little bit of model disagreement as to where the track is which has pretty much been the mo of the storm all along here but notice anywhere along the texas coast here i think is going to be a point of interest i think towards corpus christi and areas a little bit off to the northeast may be a point of interest in regards to that tornado threat early on and i think things will kind of just ramp up from that point further to the south as we get closer to an inevitable landfall at this point so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar could look like like I said, widespread shower and storm activity across the country as a whole here. We're going to continue to see that be the case as we head through the evening here. But we're going to start to see that diminish as the sun sets. We're going to see a repeat of that tomorrow. Here's our chance of storms popping up here. Like I said, timing is a real issue with that in regards to parameters here. I think everything just kind of develops a little too late or a little too early for things to really take off from that point. There is an odd chance of maybe a little brief spin up here, but I I find it pretty unlikely at this point. Last but not least here, this is heading into Sunday. Do have a little MCS that tries to develop early in the afternoon, a little bit of redevelopment later in the evening. And then at that point, we're shifting our attention towards barrel. And that's pretty much that here. As far as the rest of the country is concerned with its temperatures here, we pretty much know the deal, unfortunately. It's going to be hot across the board for all of us, unfortunately. But wherever you can get some showers and thunderstorms, it will help you cool down just a little bit here. But if not, just make sure that you have plenty of water available and avoid extended periods of time outside if at all possible. But this is pretty much all I got for you guys this evening here. Hope you guys take care. Have a good rest of your night. And we'll be back here tomorrow once again. Till then, it's been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. Take care.